In this video, we're building and running the new Rock Rat SCX24 chassis kit from Mofo RC. This could be one of the coolest chassis kits available on the market for the SCX24. It's got a hot rod style look with some super innovative features. We've got this retro style hot rod cab and one of the coolest features that I've seen on an SCX24 build, a dual motor setup. Now I'm going to take you through the whole build. We're going to assemble this thing together. We're going to open up the kit. I'll show you what comes in it. Then we're going to put it together, check out the finished product, and we're going to run this thing. I'm super pumped for this. I've been eyeballing this kit for a long time, and I can't wait to show you guys the process of putting it together. So let's jump in and check this thing out. So let's check out the kit before we get into this. So I've already opened this up. I've been messing with this a little bit. As you can see, I've painted some of the parts already just to get started. I've also put some magnets on here. But let's go through, I'll tell you what comes in it, and I'll tell you what I've done. This whole kit is a combination of SLS and SLA printed material. The pieces have a really strong, rugged feel to them. Everything comes unpainted. You can certainly sand and paint these yourself. I have got plans for the cab and stuff, but I'm going to run out of time today, so I just left that black. So you do get the cab, obviously. You get that here. These silver pieces here. We've got kind of our sliders, and they're also, they look like headers coming off of the exhaust. The whole thing's going to come together like a rat rod, hot rod type deal, which is super cool. We've got a couple different motor covers here. So you got one with like a dual intake, and then you've got one with a blower on it. These attach to your cab with the supplied magnets. So if you want to change it out, it sits on it just like that. And if you want to put the blower on there. I love it. Super cool. This is such a cool kit. I'm pumped for this. We've got another bag of components here. This is our front kind of nose piece here. It's going to sit just like that. It's also doubles as your shock towers here. You can see if that's integrated there. Here's our skid plate. So this is a real thick, beefy skid plate here. This is our transmission housing and motor mount very unique looking piece of hardware here and it's necessary because you get to run dual motors on this one of the coolest things about this kit that drew me to this almost instantaneously was the two motor setup you get your choice of motors you can run the torque beast or the buzzsaw the latter is going to give you a ton of speed where the former torque beast which we have here is going to be more of a crawling style motor but I'm super excited to see what it's going to be like with two of these things on there. So you get one motor on each side. They're slotted in like a V, so it'll be like a V8 style shape here. And then you're going to strip out a stock SCX24 transmission, put the gears, bearings, and everything in here, and that's going to be your transmission housing. We get a battery tray, and we get our electronics slash rear body hinge here couple things to note I mentioned that it does come with the magnets I've super glued these in here after I painted these parts silver also put some on the body itself so it's I got a hinge mount in the back and then magnets in the front to hold this thing down you get the two motors with the kit but you do not get the wiring harness so I just grabbed some pH 2.0 connectors from Amazon male and females and then just splice them in together and made my own adapter this kit is built around a C10 Bronco JLU wheelbase. You will need frame rails to build this kit. You see this whole thing sits around stock SCX24 frame rails. So I've got an old C10 chassis. I'm going to cannibalize the rails out of this. I've got some Endura stainless steel high clearance linkage. C10 length. You can certainly stretch this if you wanted to, but that's what the kit is built around initially. I'm really excited for this, so why don't we get in? I need to strip this chassis down, and then we're going to start assembling this together. All right, guys, so I pretty much just dove right into this. I got my chassis rails taken apart, and then I figured I'd just dive right into the transmission. So that's what I've done here. Took the old SCX24 transmission apart. When you get into this, there are four bearings that you're going to need. You're going to take a larger one off the bottom on either side and a smaller one off of the top on either side. Those are going to slot right into these triangular mounts on the MoFo setup. Big one on the bottom, small one on the top, just like the stock one. And you just press them in. Be gentle when you're pressing these in, though. This is pretty tough material here, but just be gentle. Don't try to 
manhandle these things in here too bad. I found like they went in pretty easy. You might have to take a razor blade and just kind of clean out the holes a little bit if you get some resistance there. These ones went in pretty simple. So I've got these ready to go. Now we're just going to put this thing together. Just like that. I'm guessing. We'll figure this out together one way or the other. That was actually pretty slick. Oh, we got some friction in there though. All right guys, this turned out to be more of a process than I thought, only because the gears that I was trying to use were not working inside the transmission. I ended up having to use some different gears that I had, and now we got nice smooth operation. So putting this together, you want this flange here is gonna go towards the back. That's how we're gonna set this up. So next up, we're gonna mount our motors in here. I just put one in there very gentle just to get these things from not falling out. The screws are pretty difficult to work with. So let's see. Do the next one here. All right, take a look at that. How cool does that look? It's too bad the V pattern was in the opposite direction, like a real V8 motor, but that's pretty rad having the two torque beasts on there. So I'm going to try to get my mesh correct, and then for the other two screws on each motor, I'm going to put a little dab of thread lock on there. And we should be good. I think that's good for attempt number one. We'll see when we get this thing powered up, but pretty rad right there. Next step, we're going to start building this thing out. Got my chassis rails here. I think I'm going to start with the skid plate and work my way out from there. The skid plate does not look directional, so I don't think it matters where we start here. Looking at this now, it looks like I might have to do the linkage first. Because I think we've got... Yeah, these are sunk in here. So I want to do the lower links first before you put this on the frame rails. A couple steps here, I found out. So to put this together, you put the sliders on the side, outside of the frame rails. Put your screws through that through your frame rails and into your skid plate. That's how we're going to attach this thing. So I did one side kind of as trial and error. Now we'll do the other. You can kind of see how this goes. You got the magnet mount on the inside. So when your body closes, it's gonna attach just like that. I have a small drill that I'm using just to kind of tap the holes on the skid plate. I find it's really difficult to get the screws through clean. All right, boy, that was a challenge, getting these things put together. Next, I'm gonna put the motor in. So we got the linkage and everything is done, so we'll put the motor in. So these are front facing like this. That's so cool. Just sort out my drive shafts too. So again, just kind of working my way through this trial and error here. Got the front nose piece on. This slides over your frame rails, and then there's the mounting points are on the inside. So they one bolt right there. And then on the, it's still tricky to see here, but on the inside of this little Y piece here, it bolts to your headers. So it secures it so it doesn't move anywhere. So you take a screw, you're gonna go on the inside, threads into the header, and that's what secures your front shock mount component there. In the back, you put my ESC and electronics tray here. This is where our body hinge is going to go as well. You bolt that right into your frame rails. It slides in there nice. This doubles as your shock towers in the rear. For drive shafts, what I ended up doing, I had a steel OGRC C10 drive shaft on here, and it works because it had a longer female end, and that was the only thing that I was having an issue with prior. The stock C10 drive shaft fit perfectly fine in the rear. It's a little tight but seems to work totally fine. So now we've got to put the battery tray on here. It's gonna sit right there. Nice. It's really tight against the spur gear on the transmission. I think it's good though. We'll see, I hope I got the clearance there. Four screws here. It's gonna mount on the 
top of these posts here, the silver ones, and on the battery tray, just like that. All right, so that's pretty much the chassis there. Oh, my transmissions look a little off-centered. Hopefully that's okay. We're moving right along here, though. So with the body on, we could do our hinge mount. Oh, this is looking awesome. All right, I gotta find some hardware. Put this hinge together. Let's see what we got. Check it out, guys. Here's the nearly finished product. Here, still got some cleanup work to do with my wires and the body mount and everything, but it's pretty much done. How rad does this thing look? This is such a unique and cool kit. I just love how this thing turned out. I put these DJ Crawler Retro 1-inch wheels on here, wrapped up in their brand new 64 millimeter tires. I love the wheels. I'm not so sure about the tires. I might swap those out too. So guys, let me know in the comments down below what tires should I run on this thing. I'd like to have kind of a retro scale look, but still need some performance. So we'll see. This is good for a first pass at it. It does look super gnarly as it sits right now. For suspension on here, I ended up putting the Proline Scaler shocks on it. I felt like these Proline shocks would look really good on this truck. They're big, fat shocks, and they've got a nice look to them with the black and the chrome and everything on it. I felt like it just matched the build really well, so I'm really happy with these. For my axles, just running SCX24 straight axles on it. These are stock housings. I do have a bunch of brass on here. I got the Mofo RC extended heavy hexes in the front. Just did some extended brass hexes in the back. It's got a nice track width on it. I got some brass diff covers, treel diff cover up front. So I'm anxious to see what the performance is on this and what the weight bias is. Underneath this thing, so to power this, I ended up throwing in the FuryTech Python RXF. Now this is the integrated receiver and ESC combo. I paired that with an FMS radio that I had lying around. I went with a two-in-one combo to save space because when I got in here, it looked big. It looked like there was a lot more space than there really was. So it got tight fast, and even with the FuryTech Python RXF, there's not a lot of room, and I'm having some significant troubles getting the body to close set this thing down here it fits perfectly on the tray but i can't close the body because of the lip of the python there battery tray is perfectly fine it fits an scx 24 2s in here perfectly fits great on that tray so the battery certainly wasn't an issue at all also wanted to go with the python because i needed something that had some juice to run those dual torque beast motors Really happy with how this thing came out. I mean, everything worked first pass mechanically, which I was really concerned about. I was really worried about that transmission and the dual motors, but everything works great. It's pretty quick. You now, these Torque Beast motors, this is a crawling setup, but running two of these things, it's pretty solid. If you put the dual buzz saws on here, this thing would be wild. I might do that for Axel. But crawls pretty good. You know, I'll have all the tuning capabilities with the Fury Tech app with this electronic setup, but I'm pretty pumped with this as it is right now. Before we get to the performance tests and the run footage, just a couple of items to note. If I was to do this all over again, I would take my time and I would tap each one of the holes. Rather than doing that piecemeal, I would go through and do that all at once. That way when you do assemble this, it's a nice clean installation. I struggled really, really hard trying to get all the screws and everything in through the holes. It was a lot of trying to force them, backing them out, drilling them out, and then reassembling. So if you get this kit, take your time first, go through, tap your holes, it'll be way easier for the assembly. Otherwise, this kit went together really, really well. Everything lines up excellent. It's just getting those threads from the screws to get in there and tighten everything down. All right, guys, here we are on the four corner scale. We've got 55% front, 45% rear. Not terrible. We want to shoot for that 60-40 split. But for a kit like this, hot rod style build, that's not bad, I don't think. Total weight's about 552 grams. Let's check out the RTI. So this is not a flex machine by any means. Let's see what it got anyways. I think we're about 12 on the RTI. 
Let's try some side hill. Here we go. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Uh, right at fifty. We'll try the vertical. Forty-five. Fifty. Oh, starting to unload there. Fifty-five. Fifty nine on the vertical. All right, here we go. Is the rock rat on the course? Look at this thing. It looks so cool. What a fantastic project! It was a lot of work seeing this thing in action, though. Well, this is so cool. That body's already giving me problems, though. That's a bummer. Hopefully, I can get that thing squared away. such a unique setup it just looks so cool i cannot get over how it looks i think i'm gonna leave it black axel might be super mad at me but man it looks so good those dual motors crawl in pretty good on here that python really helps with the control fighting here. We've got wicked understeer. Those tires hook up. Come on. There we go. Seeing this thing in action, it might be because the tires are really big. I feel like it's squished. It could benefit from a longer wheelbase, I feel. Controlled on the descent there, dropping into Hell's Gate. We'll hit our usual challenge lines. Running the stock SCX24 servo on here because I'm out of aftermarket ones that would fit this. We've we'll got plenty of power to bump up through the gatekeeper. It's so funny seeing a hot rod style truck on the course. Whew, that was a good save right there. Wicked understeer. I don't know if it's the tires or how this thing is built, but man, I am pushing all over the place on the course here. I do, do not fall off here. I don't want to see this thing break after all that work. There we go. That wasn't bad. Try the side hill in practice. These DJ Crawler tires have dual stage foams in them, so there shouldn't be any roll from the tires. And it actually sticks pretty well there. I just take a moment to admire this thing. How cool is it? I know I've said this a hundred times, but it's just so cool. The blower on there, I love that style. All right, Hell's Gate. Oh no! It crawls pretty well. It just you know, gets looped out there. It's just wanting to flip. Smaller tires again could help. Oh, that's number two. All right, three try rule. One more try. Come on, rat rod. Rock rat. <laughs> Whatever it is. Just stuck right there.
great control from the Fury Tech here. And those two motors, I just am in trouble here. Oh. Oh, so close. All right, I think we need a little bit of tinkering before we can hit all the lines. I think it's got the capabilities for sure. All right, guys, some unfortunate news. After one of those tumbles, I heard some noises coming from the motor. So that one of the motor mounts had cracked, and then when I tried to tighten it, snapped it right off. So I've lost the dual motor functionality, which is very unfortunate. Let's see if we can limp this thing back with one motor here. It's going along with the one. It certainly doesn't have the cool factor though. Hopefully I can get a replacement motor mount. That's a bummer. All right, limp it on in here. There we go. All right, to the shop. All right guys, an unfortunate end to an otherwise very cool project. While I had the dual motors working, this thing was a ton of fun. Cannot get over how cool the thing looks. It is just dripping with cool factor all throughout. I think this kit's gonna be great for a custom builder, a real tinkerer. You can really make this thing your own. There's just a lot of potential here for a super cool factor. And I do think there is some significant performance that can be had with this thing. The dual motor design is so cool. I would love to see it with the buzzsaw motors in it. It would be a rocket ship. So maybe that's what I'll do if I get the new motor mount. Try it with the buzzsaw motors too. But overall, this is a super cool kit, I think. Just take your time putting it together. Be gentle with the 3D printed parts when you're assembling it. So while this was quite a bit of work to assemble, it is definitely a super cool truck. Just a great example of the creativity and ingenuity that's coming out of MoFo RC. I'll put the link in the description down below for this kit and the parts that I used in this build. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Rock Rat kit? As always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next video.